Hey, Dave, hope you had a great day at church. I guess it was a little different, huh? It was, yeah. Empty building, but uh, full service and uh, great service, actually, at church today. So, really good no, day. We're all, I think we're all getting used to a new um, normal. We are. We are, definitely. Um, it, it, you and I have... Um, shared a lot. We, we've done a lot of things. I mean, we've actually had um, virtual board meetings in the last few weeks. <laughs> we have. We have. We, we have been on, um, I mean, I know I, I wasn't able to attend, but you all, you actually, y'all had a, a big meeting. It doesn't matter what the topic was, but, you know, couples gathered together virtually right. so that you could um, meet and discuss things, relational things and all that kind of stuff. And it's really kind of amazing. Um, when we used to think technology was the, that's weird. I mean, we, we just got to wait until we can get together. That's not an option anymore. Virtual is the new reality. Some of us have been living in that for longer, uh, you know, with the kind of work that we do, but virtual is the new reality for everyone right now. Um, and you know, one of the things that we have to be thinking about during this time is, um, how do we not just recoil from that, but how, how can we walk out of this time? with maybe more options for togetherness than we've had before this time. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people that are going to get over their fear of the technological kind of upgrade that they need to do in their life. Uh, they're going to get over that because they're going to have to in this time. Well, that yeah. creates a whole new opportunity for us in whatever organization, business, church, whatever we're in, uh, to really think about um, going forward beyond this time. You know what's funny is, <clears throat> excuse me, I was um, teaching people – and really encouraging people to go live, use the tools on the internet. And, and you know, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, I would say, guys, how many of you like what you look like when you see yourself on video <laughs> screen? And I think, I don't think anybody does. I mean, there may be a few vain people that really like to look at their self, but um, I said, you know what? It really is what you look like. So you just need to suck it up. <laughs> And get over it because when you in real life, when you're meeting people at Starbucks or at a restaurant or wherever, that is who they see. And it doesn't bother you to do it in real life. And right. the, the camera really doesn't make you look any different. You just don't like looking at yourself. I think. You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, it is part of our message that we carry around. I mean, I remember before I was a pastor being a soccer player in college yeah. and one of the biggest issues, the guys that I was trying to reach had was pastors that were overweight talking about all the things that they shouldn't be doing in their lives. And they're like, Hey bro, you know, let's talk about this a little bit. And so yeah. it really is a barrier. It can be a barrier to whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, and so just really taking your personal health seriously uh, is, is an important deal. Plus it extends your, your opportunity um, to work. You know, if you could add five more years of yeah. productive life, you'd do that. If someone told you how to, you could increase your value 20%, you'd probably do that. Uh, so if you could take the prime of your work years and increase that 5%, you probably should think about that. You know, when you and I, when the Tuesday morning men's thing we did for years and everything, I remember you standing up there one time and kind of confessing that uh, you love chicken wings and maybe you, maybe, maybe you eat too many chicken wings. I do. I do. I do. And I, you know, I, I, I you know, I've got my own weight issue. I'm not yeah. casting judgment on anybody. All right. So I'm just uh, talking about my own personal life. But we, 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 I mean, I've got foods I love too. I mean, I'm not a sweet tooth person, but you put a bowl of chips and salsa in front of me and right, you, you better grab your chips because they're going to be gone fast. You know, I hear you. Poblano's is too close to the neighborhood. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I guess we're down at the lake. Are they still open? I guess are most of the restaurants still it, open. It's all takeout right now. Is it? Yeah. So, um, I have had a great opportunity just to catch up with lots of friends this week. And I know, um, some are authors and some are just brilliant mentors that have poured into my life. Tell me what's going on with you and Will and um, you know, your, your unique brand. Is there anything different going on with you guys as we're uh, sequestered? Totally. I mean, uh, so I'm the co-founder of an organization called Unique with Will Mancini. Um, we help people with what we call gospel Center life design, helping you design your life to be the most productive, effective, uh, person that you can be and to step into what you were always designed to be. You know, there's so many different versions of who we are. There's the me that people want me to be. There's the me that uh, uh, people pay me to be. There's the me that I want to be. Um, but the, I, the, me, the me that others see, especially your spouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, but how do I become the me that I was created to be? Yeah. Um, we want to help people step into that. But 
in light of this disruption, I mean, it's made all of us innovators, whether we want to be an innovator or not. You yep. have to be thinking with an innovator mindset right now uh, in the middle of the disruption. So, yes, I mean, we're having to rethink our model, rethink our business model, rethink uh, the way that we approach everything right now. So is, are you, I, I know your model has been, you do it, you did a lot of gatherings where you would right. do events and you'd launch people into this new space. But, sure. but I mean, even before this started, you all were working a little bit on some virtual stuff too, weren't you? Yeah. So we do virtual cohorts has been a large part of our business model as well. Uh, but we also developed some online classes and that's one of the things that today, hopefully we can just offer to those that you're talking to as well. We're making a lot of those things available for free for a limited time for people while well, they've got a little bit extra time on their hands. If you want yeah. to do some self work and things like that, if you hold on to the end of our conversation, we're going to give you $180 value on those online courses for total free. So, I mean, you know, I've asked a lot of people this question, David, and you guys want to hang on for that because Dave's blessed us um, at our leadership we do in January. He's been at our prayer breakfast and just, has been an amazing gift to us. So, so hang on and we're going to share that with you because it can help build you up. But Dave, as we kind of head, head in that direction and you share some of those ideas with us, one of the questions that I'm posing a lot of people that, that I feel like either I'm, we're iron sharpening, iron sharpening each other, like you and I are, we're mentor, you know, you have mentors in your life. But I keep thinking about the back end of this thing. We're, we're in it right now. <clears throat> and and you're, I know you're going to share there's some phases and, and, and different reactions we have at different stages of this process. But don't you think, you know, a good goal would be, you know, if you weather this, how can you be better on the back end, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the question I'm trying to put in front of all of our leaders, trying to put in front of all the people that I talk to. You know, the question is, if 8 to 10 to 12 to, you know, hopefully not 16 weeks from now, um, you knew that you were going to be okay. Uh, what would you want to emerge from this time with? Like, what, what is it that you want to get out of this time? If you don't ask that question, we're going to be reactive the whole time that we're in this versus right. proactive. And, you know, we really have been given a, a huge gift here, a gift to reset our lives, a gift to reset some of our businesses and different things like that. I mean, you spend all your life looking, you know, hoping for a moment of reset. And it's sometimes hard to get it when everything's going pretty good. Um, but, it, you know, in a time like this, so many people get a chance to, for a free reset. And so we're saying take advantage of that. Yeah, t Tommy and I were talking yesterday. Most of us would have begged to push the reset button six months ago, you know. Right, right. Totally. Just to pause. But it, it, it's, um, it's a little different when it's forced upon you. So we have to react. To, uh, yeah. a little well, without, so, disru without disruption, though, there's no innovation. And so when things are going well, you have to be your own disruptor. The gift yeah. of a time like this is that the disruption is there and, and it's an equal playing field for everybody in the disruption. So, you know, everyone's in the same boat in a certain way. For somebody said this morning, you know, they, they quoted the verse of Esther for such a time as this, you know, there, there are things that were meant for this time. I mean, there are industries that were born out of crisis and all kind of things. So yeah. um, we're going to be a changed population on the back end of this thing. We are. And it doesn't have to be for the worse. It can be for the better. Yeah. Um, so tell me just, I know a lot of people since it's Sunday before we dive into your stuff and we got a few minutes. Um, one of the things we all have right now is a lot of time, which is kind of interesting, but how do you think the whole population is responding to virtual church? Do you feel like, I know Grace has done some, y'all are doing virtual small groups and all kind of right. things, but the, the message I'm hearing is well, there are a lot of people that are afraid and have fear and, um, you know, faith over fear has been a good phrase that I've heard. Is, is the church and is the body, do you think they're embracing that yet? Or do you think fear is still winning? I think it's still too early to tell. Um, I do think that uh, people want to be called and led into a faith mindset, uh, but it's not natural to most of us. Yeah. Um, and so part of what a disruption um, unveils or reveals um, is our leadership. And we can either step into this time as leaders or we can recoil in the midst of it. And so it's a real opportunity if you find yourself in leadership at any capacity um, to press in and step forward to help battle for the minds and hearts of people rather than just to simply recoil. And what I found is this, Kurt, when, when I'm helping somebody else, it relieves a lot of my own anxiety. When I am so caught in my own stuff, 
I just get much more anxious. But the moment I start being part of the solution, a lot of the anxiety starts to go away. You know, I totally can identify with that. And I would have said, I, I, for me, I would say it a little different. And it's not about being busy. But when I feel like I've, whether it's helping someone else or I, I feel, I feel um, like I'm just coping if I'm not being productive. I, I mean, I, I just, my, maybe it's my personality and I am a, you know, pretty high energy type A personality. But even in the midst of this, after I binge watch and, you know, you just watch so much news, you want to kind of throw up or, or go hide in the closet. Being productive has been really uh, energizing and comforting to me. So I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, you said it better than me because you said when you're helping other people, I, I, maybe I'm a little more selfish. I've been productive doing a lot of things. But just you and I chatting right here, it's amazing when this goes live and people are listening, it's amazing how many people just need an encouraging word, you know? Totally. Totally. There's, there's something that everyone can do. Um, and, you know, even being an American right now, uh, I, I really believe and hope that this is going to reveal um, some of our resilient spirit that we have and some of our, our hopefully others first um, spirit that, that, that we have as well. That, that comes out oftentimes in these points of crisis. So that, that's what I'm praying for. That's what I'm believing in. And, Hopefully we can recapture some of that. Sorry, I, I just reacted. My son, my son and his crew have been hunting, and they were just about to invade our space here. So I had to, I had to shush them at the door. Sorry about that, guys. Um, when you're all sequestered, you never know who's going to pop open the door. But uh, True. True. Um, yeah, it's um, it's sad what's going on. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I've been trying to like absorb news. Just I want to stay informed, but I, I really got to get away from it overwhelming me. But um. You know, Italy in some places, it's it's crazy. It's really it crazy. Really is. Uh, it is. It is. Yep. And we're, we're praying for them. But um, <clears throat> so there's some things I think that um, maybe you know the reason I'm I'm doing some of these just fireside chats or whatever is I want to bring some encouraging stuff to you guys. I want to give you some alternatives to binge watching, and I really want all of us to come out of this so much better than we went in. I mean, my first thought was, and, and Dave's totally better equipped than I am on this, but Steve Cockerman, I got to talk about, you know, let's build our relational capital while we're cooped up. You know, let's, let's use technology to have stronger relationships, more relationships, more conversations going on. There are a lot of things, but Dave, I know you've put a lot of thought into this and I think everybody's trying, you know, we're coming out of shock. Maybe I got, maybe shock was the first reaction. Um, my, my college age kids and the younger kids, they're, they're invincible and they don't understand why they can't go put their bathing suits on and rub, rub Santon lotion on and lay next to each other on a towel. Or, um, I mean, I, I actually had to get <clears throat> almost like a confrontation because they went to dinner and they weren't home and they weren't home and come to find out they'd gone to play pool at a billiards place. You know, it's like, what are you thinking? You know, right. you know, yeah, yeah we're not going to get sick. And I'm like, yeah, but maybe, maybe not. But I mean, who are you going to spread it to? Your right. mom's about to go see your grandmother and take supplies and she's 80 years old. And you know, it's yeah. just, we got, we got to think with our heads, not with our pleasure monitors or whatever, I guess right now. Yeah, I mean, it's even you start, you're starting to see already some of the marketing shift and change. You just saw the latest advertisement for Nike. Um, and the way they're advertising right now is you always wanted to play for millions. Uh, so play inside because as yeah. you do, you, you're saving the lives of millions kind of thing. And that's so, good. That was that's, good. That's a great marketing message, I think, in this wow. moment. Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, I'm sure a lot of companies online sales are booming. Our sales are booming. And, uh, you hate to feel that. You hate to feel bad about that in a time like this. But I mean, our company's doing things we want to help. And we, we got the kids can get it for free. If the parents are on it, we got a foundation set up to cover that. And, and we, we do want to help people with their immune system and grow stronger, but look, let's dive into unique a minute and kind of tell us where you think we are, Dave, in this cycle. I know you've put a lot of thought into it. Well, let me pull up a little sh uh, sheet here that I think will be helpful for all of us as we work through this. Um, because um, for me, I don't know if you felt this way, Kurt, or not, but I felt as mo at the moment the, the crisis really broke, uh, it was like a day later, I started just getting bombarded with opportunities and resources from everybody. Yep. Um, and so there's the frantic nature of the crisis, but then I found all these resources were only making me more frantic. 
like all these, you know, messages and all these advertisements and I'm giving you this and doing this. I was like, I don't know what to do with all that right now. And the fact that you're sending me more stuff is yeah. only, you know, I know you're doing it with all the best heart in the world, but, but it's only making me more and more frantic. And part of that was because I didn't have a framework to think about my leadership in light of this period of time. Yeah. Everybody I get emails from has sent me an email with a subject line, COVID-19 update, you know, and you, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. and so what I found is everyone's offering me resources and, um, you know, products and all that kind of stuff, but no one was offering me a framework. And so uh, at Unique, we, we started developing a framework and we've, we've offered this now to hundreds of leaders across the country and they found it incredibly helpful to help them weather this thing and actually take ground in this thing, uh, you know, a couple weeks at a time. And so whenever you think about disruption, the framework that we put together, we put it on an eight week time frame. This might be 12 weeks. It might be, uh, you know, 16 weeks. There's a, there's a certain elasticity in this. But we, we said the first couple weeks were an adjustment period. And we're um, still there, I think, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're yep. still in yep. this one to two week period for yep. sure. Um, everyone's normal rhythms and routines have been upended. I mean, one of my buddies said, I was doing all right with this until I realized that I was now a homeschool, homeschool father of three. You know, and all of a sudden that just that disruption of kids at home instead of at school just totally changes the game and things. I heard a crazy funny, um, just sorry to interrupt you, but um, a mom put on Facebook, so far so good, first week homeschooling, only two suspensions and one after school detention. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's exactly the way it is. Um, and so I think, you know, as leaders, helping people realize that's normal. Yeah. You need an adjustment period. And by the way, people don't need to be barraged with a bunch of stuff in that time. What they need is people who will fight for their mindset. This first two weeks is a battle for the mind. It's what you're talking about, faith over fear. Um, how do we you know, uh, recognize that our lives have been disrupted, but for every great struggle, um, there's a great story. There's no great stories without a great struggle. There's no great testimonies without a great test. But we have to adjust into this period of time. Yeah. Um, and so as leaders, in the first two weeks, it's a battle for the mind with people, getting them into a mindset, a battle mentality, um, readjusting their rhythms. We're recommending to leaders, you know, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we, we add a little framework to this that we'll get to in just a second. But, you know, in your communication, you want to stick a flag in the ground, try and communicate at the same time every day if you possibly can. That's good. Uh, and battle for people's mindsets in this time. Yeah, you still even even though we're you, you still need rhythm in your new in your new normal. Yeah, you have to create those new rhythms, and yeah. the people who are following you need those new new rhythms. They need to know when they can expect to hear from you. They need to know what you have to say. There needs to be a level of confidence. We say we say this to people all the time. We don't know exactly what's going to happen in this crisis, but we do know how we're going to lead you in this crisis. Um, and so, what people need is confident leaders who say you know what, we're, we're, we've never pastored through a pandemic, we've never led through a pandemic, but we are confident that we, that we know what to do and the right questions to ask in the middle of this, and we're going to lead you through this. We're not going to just dump you into 12 weeks at a time, but we're going to take this two weeks, and then four to six or eight weeks, and then two weeks as we begin to re-engage. Um, and we've got a framework for that, and we've got some strategies for what we're doing. Now, the other thing that's important in this um, is to remind people in your company, in your church, there are some things that don't change with the disruption. Your mission doesn't change, right. your values don't change, your mission measures don't change, and your long-term vision doesn't change. And even your, mess even your messaging doesn't change. The, the how you message may change, but right. your messaging right. doesn't change. Yeah. So what changes is strategy. But your people need to know those other things haven't changed. We're yeah. still people who's on the, who are on this mission. We still believe in these values. We're still going for this in regard to our mission measures and our long-term vision. Yeah. Where, we, where we're needing to address is our strategy. But let's not just think that everything's changing because everything's not. And in this two-week period, if we can help them see what's not changing, if we can anchor into that, if we can help them grab some new rhythms by setting some new rhythms ourselves that they can uh, draft off of, right. those are really incredibly helpful things for us to do. Can I ask you one question while I mess up your train of thought? No, no, you're good. Um, so the, the pushback I'm getting because you and I each, all of us have different people we lead, you know, and so the people that I lead, I think whether it's ministry, business, family relationships, 
the pushback I'm getting is everybody wants to see this is so temporary. They're not willing to adapt these new rhythms. They, they, they think it's going to pass faster than it is. Right. And, you know, I wish it would be over tomorrow, but yeah. guys, I, I think we're in for at least a couple months. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, even the most conservative people that I would talk to um, think this is at least eight weeks for yeah. us. Uh, and um, that's an important thing to think through uh, because that is more than just a temporary disruption. You know, everyone takes a week vacation. Very few people take eight weeks in a row kind of thing. And it, it's going to disrupt things. I mean, it, it's almost a fifth of a year. Yeah. If you think about it, you know? Yeah, totally. <clears throat> so, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're adjusting and we're teaching new things, but keep going. I didn't mean to, mean okay. to interrupt you, but I just wanted to, I wanted people to know that you're like, why do I need to learn these new rhythms? And why is this structure Dave's talking important about guys, whether it's eight weeks or it's 10 weeks or it's 12 weeks or whatever it is, this is valuable time. You can, you, you right. can, you, you can benefit from. And that's where we turn the conversation. You know, once people begin to get adjusted, we want to turn the conversation from adjust to invest. Okay. Um, and so if adjust is the battle for your mind, then the invest period is a battle for your time. Okay. How do we take potentially wasted time and turn it into invested time? That's the battle that we want to go for next. So we're about to get there. We're not there yet, but we're almost there. Yeah. So middle of this next week, end of this next week, we want to start changing the conversation from just the kind of faith over fear kind of thing to say, no, th this is an opportunity. Let's make sure we invest this time and don't waste this time. Okay. And where, you know, it, it, as you lead, you want to start to say, all right, um, this is the place where we can begin to help people make sure they get out of this time, the things that they need to get out of this time. And now what resources do we have to uh, offer to people that they're ready for them in such a way that they can make this invested time? Again, there's elasticity in this. Uh, you know, it's, it's four weeks on our chart. It might be, you know, eight, six weeks might be eight weeks. Our recommendation is that you plan about four weeks at a time um, so that you're not in a 12 week plan when things went in, end in eight. Um, yeah, it's, it's changing daily almost. Yeah. 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 So, so I would say plan about four weeks at a time in this investment strategy um, and be ready to, to know that it could be extended for longer than that four weeks and, and to think about that. You know, for churches, this means it's definitely going to interfect with Easter. Um, and so you, you want to get ahead on those things. Any big events that you have going on, you really want to get ahead on now. But also just in, uh, this, is a, this is the time to um, innovate your ministry. You want to be working hard in this next week and a half on all your innovation so that you have a, a plan and something to offer people in the new reality that they're going to be stepping into. So one, one of the things we're going to talk about is that you want to be in both a now and next mindset. Now, what am I delivering? I'm delivering a battle for the mind. I'm delivering the fear of faith, but I'm planning for next. And so yeah. every moment I'm not delivering now, I'm planning for next so that we're in a, in a, in a place that we can actually deliver that when the time comes. Not it, it, it's amazing to me. I mean, I know we're all wired different, but when this started, because it was all about the immune system. We just had a demand. I mean, our sales are up as much as 50% certain products and we, we got, we got on. So I didn't have time to slow down, you know, because <clears throat> the demand was up, but it's amazing in the midst of that. It may, maybe that, maybe that made my adjustment period a little bit shorter, David. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know, but it was, I mean, I feel like um, maybe not, I'm totally in the investment period yet, but it's amazing how many new skills, Right. That I've already learned and adapted to and, and, and made comfortable. Right. That it's a new normal, but yeah. I wasn't afraid to learn some new things to make this normal okay. Right. So with that though, with I love the demand that you guys are getting with your product, but remember, people are gonna normalize yeah. uh, and there's gonna be a tendency for them to drop off the way they've always, you know, that's sure. always been something yep. get. So you wanna start getting ahead of that early now. You're, they're starting to purchase. There's been this big demand, but yep. now you want to be thinking, how do I keep them doing this? How do oh, I yeah. keep them interested in this? Um, and you want to have some plans for that, especially for these new uh, consumers that are coming into your purview. I mean, you know, it's funny because um, a lot of these people have amazing careers and amazing jobs that have kind of been put on hold, but there, there are a lot of families that, you know, I mean, I don't want to discourage them from, uh, not just 
we want them to certainly benefit from the product, but some are trying to find some ways to make extra money. And that's been a fun thing too, but you want to feel like you're helping and contributing. And to me, that's part of your invest thing. When, you, when you're talking about it, adjust and invest, right now we all need to help each other and invest in each other. And, and Kurt, you know, I know one of the things that has been huge on your heart as well as really the whole Juice Plus family is that you guys aren't a vitamin company. You guys are a whole life company. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as people are purchasing now for their immune system, it's a great time to be messaging to them that we're a whole life company. Yes, you're going to get your stuff from us, but we're invested in your whole life. And, uh, and uh, as you get to that investment piece, to just recognize it's a huge opportunity um, to get that message out that you've been trying to get out for so long in a, in a really cohesive way to them. But the lack of busyness, the lack of busyness is making people listen. And, and I know to your stuff too. So keep, I'm getting you off track. Keep going. So we're, we're in the investment period. What does that mean? Yeah. So this is where, where again, uh, you want to be able to present your innovative company to people. Yep. You're going to be able to, yeah, as a church, you know, um, again, I'm going to show you how to think through this at a granular level, but uh, this is the place where you want to um, rethink what you're doing and uh, come up with your strategical approach to make sure people move through this time uh, gaining something out of it. Eventually though, that's gonna, that's gonna end and you're gonna have to talk about re-engagement. Um, and so if, you know, adjust is a battle for the mind and invest is a battle for time, then engage is a battle for the future. Um, how do you ready your people to go back into a new normal um, as an innovator contributing from day one rather than just simply getting you know, on their heels. It's gonna be a great time um, for people in the workforce to demonstrate value because they have invested this time. Um, and so how do we ready people for the return to a new normal um, and to recognize you know, the normal that we've had is, is probably not the one that everyone's gonna to return to. There's gonna be a new normal. Sure. And you're gonna return as an innovator and as a direct contributor and you wanna ready them for that so they enter back in on their toes, not on their heels. I mean, I, I, did, I didn't plan on you doing this to me, but you're already, I mean, I mean, I'm, this is not a biased statement. You're already giving me some peace. Just, just kind of say, I, I know it's um, elastic, but just kind of seeing the phases we're going to go through, I totally agree with you, but it makes me feel better just sitting there looking at totally. what it looks like uh, over the next weeks it, or months. I mean, it, it feels good. It's been huge for our people because 12 weeks, 16 weeks can all feel overwhelming, but you say, no, no, guys, we got a framework, two weeks of adjustment. We're going to battle for it. Then we're going to do investment with you. And we're going to battle for it. Then we're going to help you re-engage. Now all of a sudden, okay, I feel like someone, you know, they, people, you know, we always say in, in, in regard to crisis and just in regard to leadership, people don't need a menu. They need a map. Yep. Um, and so, you know, instead of just offering a whole bunch of things, what people want to know is you've got a map to lead through this. And if you don't have a map, at least you have a compass. You have a compass to help get us through this. And what we we're just seeing is as we communicate this to people, everyone's able to take a deep breath and say, okay, I can fight for the next two weeks. I, 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 like you, you've told me what the battle is for the next two weeks. And then we can take the next four weeks. And then we can take the next two weeks. I don't have to think about it all at once. It's been helpful, exactly what you're talking about, to bring peace to people. I know it brought peace to me just as a leader to know what I'm doing. Because if not, I, every new what, what happened is every new article that I was reading uh -huh. and every resource was making me reset a framework. And so what happens is people don't have a framework, they stay in the adjust period the whole time. So they're always adjusting and they never get out of it. And so you're always reactive and you're always panicked and you're always have anxiety versus saying, no, no, we're going to do this and then we're going to do this and we're going to do We that. have to get out. I mean, I love your word adjust. I, I've been saying, guys, coping is not a good at you know good description of what you're doing because you're saying adjust I think I think adjustment gives people some space to to get there but we don't want coping or adjusting going on the whole time right and just remember Kurt, Kurt, this kind of follows the way every great story is written so every great story starts with an orientation and then a disorientation and a reorientation you know it doesn't matter whether it's Star Wars Lord of the Rings the Bible you know the orientation, everything's going good. There's a disruption and there's a disorientation. If there's no disorientation, if there's no disruption, there's no story. Yeah. Um, and, but there, eventually there's a reorientation. Um, and then that reorientation leads to a new orientation. Well, we just kind of taken those steps of a story and say, this is the way things, gonna, things, this is the way it always plays out in the story. There's a disruption in which there's a disorientation in which you have to adjust. Uh, then there's a reorientation period back to orientation. 
Um, and so we're just taking that and laying it out as a framework to say, we believe God's writing a great story through your life. If we believe that, then um, it makes sense that we'd be disoriented for a while, but we've got to move out of that into reorientation and then back into orientation. So, so, you, so the engage things got me intrigued. That's almost like the hope for me, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, um, the investment thing's fun for me because I mean, I've been reading, I've been soaking in m most of what I've decided to do. Um, and I want all you guys to plug into all these tools, but what's fueled me. I mean, I, I was actually super excited about Dave and I connecting today. It was just, it's kind of going to be my highlight of the day because I haven't had any human interaction other than my wife and kids and I love them, but that's kind of an over and over and over and over and over again thing right now, you know, and uh, we're doing good, but um, take, take us, make that engagement and that hope at the end of the tunnel kind of come to life, Dave. Yeah. So um, with that, uh, in, in the re-engagement period, um, it's recognizing that uh, the future can be better than it is today. It doesn't mean that there's not real things to mourn. I mean, in that investment period, one of the things that maybe doesn't come through all the way is part of that, there's going to be some things to mourn too. You know, I mean, it's everything from, there might be real people that get sick, maybe even people that die, but it's also other things like, you know, my daughter lost her track season. I know college seniors that lost their walking and graduation. Yeah, my son can't graduate. Yeah. So there's real things other than just death that people are mourning in this time. And, and so this investment strategy is one of working with that, but also, um, you know, trying to make the most of it. When you get to re-engagement, it's recognizing uh, that the move is from regret to uh, re-engagement, meaning that um, you can think about all the things you lost, or you can begin to think about the new future that can be created. Um, and so we want to move from just thinking about all the things that we lost in this time to say, no, I've become a new kind of innovator and a new future is waiting to be created. And in this time, because I invested it, I'm ready to step into that as a contributor, as an innovator, as someone who's gonna create the future. You know, that, I, know, I know people are hearing this from all different angles, but that's really cool because, you know, I don't know if you remember hearing that the generation that came out of World, World War II, they were called the greatest generation. Right. And yeah. you know, a lot of people are talking right now about how that adversity by itself doesn't make you great, but your response to adversity can make you great. And I think we're going to look back and there's going to be a great generation emerge from this. Yeah, there definitely can be. That's definitely the opportunity. It's not going to happen by accident. Right. We're going to have to move into it with courage. Um, but uh, it definitely is the opportunity on the back end of it. So, so do, do you have even more, is the framework you dive into, is that something they need to pursue online? Or is there more you can dig into today just for a few minutes? Let me give you one more little thing real quick um, that might be helpful. Okay. To, to just get at a granular level, think through this. Uh, because what we try and do when we're working with companies or organizations is to say, all right, in light of these, four, these, these three periods of adjust, invest, engage, here's four big things that you need to look at. Um, how are you creating community in each time period? Um, because what people need is a community and a cause. They need a community part of to help meet their needs uh, and to really deal and process with things. But they need a cause like we were talking about earlier because they want to be part of the solution and it relieves anxiety. So how are you in the first two weeks doing community? Like what are you calling them to in community? And if you can, how can you get a short term win, you know, in the first two weeks that really rally people to a kind of cause so they can feel that sense of winning in the middle of everything that feels like they're losing. Then how are you communicating? This is where we talk about, you know, stake a flag in the ground, regular hours of communication um, with people. What are we, is it that we're going for in our communication with people? And then what's our cash strategy in the middle of these first two weeks? Uh, as that adjust, you know, ends, you're gonna be rethinking all four of these things for the invest period. And then rethinking all four of these things for the engage period. Um, and so what we're saying is if you've got a team, this, this is the conversation you want to have. How do we fight for the two, first two weeks with community cause, communication, and cash? How do we do that in that next period of time where people are ready for more things from us? How do we begin to introduce new opportunities for community, new opportunities for cause, new things in regard to communication? So I know like one of the things that we did at, at Grace um, in, in regard to the cause piece is we said we wanted to get a couple quick wins. So the first win was this. We said we want to try and log as many miles of prayer walking as we possibly can in these first two weeks. Cool. You need to get outside anyway. So go outside with your family, walk the neighborhood, pray for it. Let's see if how, how many miles of prayer walking that we could get as a community. 
Um, and then we also took, you know, 10% of our, 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 everything that comes in this week. Um, and it's built for our benevolence. The people that, you know, are going to be struggling through a rough time in this patch, we're designating as a church to come along and be, a, be alongside for that. What a blessing. <laughs> 15% for mission, but this is another 10% in which we're designating for people who might be struggling in this time. Again, this is helpful, I think, uh, to, to, to say that anyone can play. Anyone can play on a prayer walk. Anyone can play by, you know, giving in such a way. So this is a short-term win in regard to cause that we were kind of going for over the first two weeks. But as you get into the investment period, you're going to rethink some of that. What's the longer-term causes that we can be part of? What's, the, what's our longer term approach to communication? What's our longer term approach to cash and community? Um, so, and, and, and that's not going to be a drastic thing, is it? I mean, we're not going to like all of a sudden the light bulb is going to go off in two weeks. We're going we're gonna to slide into that, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, for our church, uh, we didn't want to offer just a whole bunch of stuff in the first two weeks. We right. really wanted to streamline our communication, and we want to do things that everyone can play in. So, you know, we, we have some online communities and things like that. Um, that aren't necessarily going after anything, but just helping people adjust. Yeah. We'll get more formal in these next few weeks where we say, hey, here's, ex here, you know, you can invest in your family or you can invest in, in yourself. You can invest in your relational, you, you can, we're, we're going to create some, some formalized community options for people that are going something, go, going somewhere over the four to six weeks. Right. That's a little different kind of community than one that we're offering right now, which is just kind of triage communities. Hey, just show up. Doesn't matter what ministry yeah. you were in, show up here. There's a place for you to talk and, 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 and to be with people. Kind of phase one. Yeah. 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 And so it gets more formal in the, in that, in that phase of things. And our communication can be different. We may not need to communicate every single day in the investment period. But we might say, you know what, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays we do. Um, and so we can back off. We might be able to introduce new voices into the communication at that point in time. Uh, and, we've, and we're definitely gonna be going for different kinds of things than just helping people get adjusted. Well, so, yeah. Let me, one of the things that's been really cool and I wanted to share this is, you know, if, <clears throat> if you're going to the same church every Sunday or if, if in our, scenario in our business we have lots of different events and leadership and we might have a local doctor or physician that could come speak or whatever but what we found from a communication and what we can offer a perspective since since we're we are forced to be virtual i mean somebody in california can be speaking to the community in atlanta just as easy as somebody in atlanta can be doing it so i think people are receiving you know where virtual felt weird i almost feel like i'm being fed better because um virtual is not weird anymore so people are feeding to me that are three thousand miles away where two weeks ago i felt like i had to physically be in a chair in front of them with a microphone right. and i'm getting i feel like i'm getting more food if i'm willing to take it in totally tell us this is our little strategy map um, Will Mancini wrote a book called Innovating Discipleship. By the way, you can get that book for free from us as well right now. Wow. Um, that's a free download for us. If you'll go to our website, all this stuff, we're going to give you the links to that here at the end. But you get a free free book. You get $180 worth of free courses that are online courses. But in that, the framework that Will gives out when he talks about innovation is he says, you know, he does, you know, on the vertical, you can do the same thing or a new thing. And then on the horizontal, the same model or a new model. Um, so most of the time when people think about the results they want to get, they want to do uh, the same thing the same way. Okay. Uh, and, and that's that kind of maximize at the end. There's some things that we can do the same thing the same way. Uh, but if you want to do the new thing in the same way, that's, that's an infusement strategy um, that we talk about infusing something new into what you're already doing um, that will help you get something different than you currently are. So, so would that know? bottom left-hand corner, Dave, kind of be like your comfort zone? Yeah, that's, your, that's what you're currently doing for the okay. most, most Yeah, part. okay. If yeah. you want to do something new, you can do the same model, but you're going to infuse something new into that model. Okay. Um, and, and, and that'll be a certain kind of strategy that you do. So you might say, you know what? I've already got a community group meeting, uh, but I want to get them thinking about their health. So we're going to do a new thing yeah. to help them think about their health using the same kind of model. So it's, but you're, you're still a little bit of comfort zone, but you're adding a flair to it or something. I got right. you. Yeah. Right. So the other one in regard to adapt is you're going to do the same thing in a new, mo a new model or in a new way. This is what every church in America has had to do. 
we're doing a Sunday morning service, but we're doing it in a totally different way. It's an adaption kind of strategy um, because not everyone, you can't come to a church building anymore. You got to do it online. There's some real adaption that, that, that has had to happen in that moment. So it's the same thing in a new way. But the same thing in a new way, could that new way also be like your audience changes a little bit too? Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Totally. And then the last strategy is you're doing a new thing a new way, which is a, a, a creation uh, strategy. So what we're saying is as you think about the investment period, what is it that you need to infuse? What is it you need to adapt? And what is it that you need to create? Um, those that's are really, that, that's really good. That's awesome. So uh, again, that's all in the innovating discipleship. And that's not just for church people. Uh, you know, we're all making disciples in one way or sure. the other. Yeah. Uh, and so this is just a great strategy. It, literally the book is a 70 minute read. It's, it's a small book, but it's a really good book uh, written for a, a time like this. So okay, I mean, j just, I mean, I was thinking investment and I, I kind of knew what that was, but you breaking it down right there, that gives me four places to work on. Cause I mean, all four of those are viable, right? You're not saying to live in any one of those four. We need right. to do all four of them, right? Got to do all four of them. Got to do all four of them. This is what innovators do. It's not always, you know, nothing to something. Yeah. You know, it's something to something new, and there's lots of different ways to get there. Um, and there's some stuff that's really good that you don't want to really change. You just want to maximize. So it, it, it could just be a step in a right. new direction. You're not jumping off the cliff. Right. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So this gives you at least it names three, you know, four different kinds of strategies yep. that you can use while you're thinking about community, cause, uh, communication and cash. Um, and so we're going to be actually walking pastors and leaders through this every Monday. Um, we're going to be, it's a free online kind of thing with Will and I 12 o'clock um, that people could be part of. And it's just a one hour kind of coach. We'll be walking through this framework with people on a regular basis. What a great tool for right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. So with that, uh, here's, here's some ways that you can grab on to what we're doing. Um, if you go to lifeunique.com, it's my time. Uh, again, you'll get we, in our life design process, all of journey one helps you create your own life call, your own mission statement, your own four values. Um, there's four online classes, the unique starter kit course, your story matters, find your one thing and living on mission. Normally this costs $180. We're giving it free till March 27th. So you've got a deadline of March 27th, but if you'll go there, um, it's totally free through Thinkific with us right now that we're giving to people. Um, we'd love for you to join us. It's totally online. Uh, what we mean by that is it's learning at your own pace. Um, and so there are videos that coach you through it. There are worksheets for you to fill out. Um, and then, you know, we'll even offer some online coaching hours that you can be part of. Uh, if you get stuck or you need some coaching in the middle of that. Dave, let me clarify this generous offer. They don't have to be finished with the course by March 27th. Just no. sign up by then, right? Just sign up by then. You just got to have it downloaded by then. Sign up for it and you get it totally free. Um, actually, you don't even have to have it downloaded. You just have to be signed up and in the system by then. And you can go through it at your own pace. So I, you, you talked about your calling here. I, I'm going to ask you a question because there's something that's really important in my life. And and I, I, I've written a book called Make a Life. And that's not even a relevant issue right here, but I'm, but that book was written because people finding out what their purpose is, what their God given purpose is, has been to me, something that brings joy is part of what you're talking about really could help them get to that place. Couldn't it to figure yeah. out how they're, yeah, totally. So one of our tools that we'll take you through is called the sweet spot where we help you inventory your passions, your abilities, and your context and find what is the one thing that you must do. That, yeah. that you're doing while you do everything else. Um, and so we have tools that help you look at your passion, have tools that help you really identify what, what you do the best. So passion question is, um, uh, what fuels me most? Abilities question is, what can I do best? And then context is, where is my impact the greatest? And, and context is one of those things that people oftentimes don't think about enough. But take a guy like Nick Saban. Um, Nick Saban is going to go down. I know it's hard for you, Kurt, to talk about Nick Saban, but he's going to go down as one of the best football coaches of all time, right? No I mean, question. Yeah. Um, but think about Nick Saban's li life. He was a national championship football coach at LSU. He's a multi-time national championship football coach at Alabama. But where was he between LSU and Alabama? Well, he, was uh -huh. with, he was with the oh, Miami. 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 What, what you, Miami? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a 50-50 football coach. He won 50% of his games. Nick Saban's a great college football coach. Context makes all the difference. 
because you can have the right passions, right abilities, be in the wrong context and not see the kind of results that you want to see. And all of a sudden, when that happens, you start to doubt your passion and you start to doubt your abilities. So context, where's my impact the greatest is such an important circle as well. When all those three things come together, we call it your sweet spot. And we want to be living more in our sweet spot because we're going to be more productive in what we do. And our time and energy is going to matter in ways that are more helpful to more people. So there could be some major like discovery really oh. it happened. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about just from what you just said, there, there may be a lot of us that figure out when we entered this thing, we were... Maybe we've been coping for a long time and we weren't operating in our sweet spot, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, all right. So just before they download this resource, how, what does it look like? Is it like an hour a day for six weeks or how would you say they're going to invest their time to implement this? You can do it however you want to. Um, each course is between six and 10 videos long. They're okay. short videos. For the most part, they're eight to 10 minute videos with exercises for you to do okay. um, on the back end of it, worksheets that you download that are part of that as well. Okay. Some of those exercises will take a while. Like when, we're, when you're looking at your story, we're going to you know, press you to, some, to do some deep dive, uh, deep digging in your, in your story. Uh, because the way, the way you, you think about the past determines the future that you'll create. And we want you to think about your past, not so that you're confined to it or trapped in it, uh, but so that it can fuel your future. Um, what we say is most people have interpreted their, have uh, experienced their story, but very few people have interpreted their story. Um, and the problem is if you don't interpret your story, your past will define your future. But if you interpret your story, your past will fuel your future. When I get to do something like that and I, I'm, I'm engaged in exercise, right? it's real different for me right now because when I go watch my favorite movie for the 10th time, I feel like I have to have a bowl of food with me while I watch it. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm doing something like this, you're you're engaged. You're my. I don't have to have food with me, so that might be a good thing too. You know. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Yep. We all need that. We all need that. I, I'm a, I'm 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 doing a little diet. Not, not diet. I'm doing a little health exercise myself right now, and it's been hard in the middle of this stress. All I want to do is eat all the things that are bad for me. So I totally get it. Yeah, we're 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 trying we're trying really hard here to um have the healthy things. It was I don't know if, if you've been to the grocery store yet, and you're in this. Yeah. Time yep. period. Uh, we've kind of figured out you kind of you, you can't go get everything you need. You just kind of have to kind of keep checking in to see if they've got what you're wanting. Right. But every time I go to the grocery store, it's so weird. You hear every doctor online. I mean, I think all of them are saying it's a respiratory virus. Don't smoke. That'd be, you know, that's one thing you could do for your health. But they all seem to be telling us to eat more fruits and vegetables. And I go to the grocery store. The cereal's gone. The toilet paper's gone. The potato chips are gone. The donuts are gone. And the produce section is pretty well stocked, which has been nice for us because we like to buy those things. But I guess it really paints a picture of what our society eats. Right. Yeah, totally. Especially or maybe they're after comfort food right now. I don't know. <laughs> Especially under stress. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. Well, hey, Dave, thanks so much for sharing this. And, um, and if, if they've got any questions, um, that link on the, um, on the offer you had there. Is there a way on the website if they have a yeah. question they can ask? The home page will have all this. It's just life unique, Y O U N I Q U E, lifeunique.com. Okay. Um, you can go straight there and get everything that you need right from the home page. And should they follow you on Twitter or Facebook? Yeah, I would love that. would love that. So I'm, I'm on Facebook, just Dave Rhodes. Um, I'm on Twitter at, at Dave Rhodes. Okay. Dave underscore Rhodes. Yeah. Um, that would be great. Uh, and, you know. Okay. Cool. And I know just like me, guys, reach out and touch us. Dave and I are super uh, relational kind of people. And, you know, I think I'm going to put words in Dave's mouth, but we've lived life together for a while. We love to golf together. We got a lot of common things, but I kind of believe it's our responsibility to reach out and connect. And God doesn't put people together for, you know, for nothing. And all you can do is reach out and connect and start the conversation God, let God be in charge of the fireworks. Let God be in charge of what, what the engagement is at the end of this because of the connections and the relationships you make during this. Totally. And, and Kurt, you know, I know, I know it's, it's been a couple of years since you wrote it, but your book, Make a Life, Not a Living, um, is so helpful for this time period. All the things that we're talking about with Unique are things that you broach in that book that are so huge. Um, and so it's, it's a great time to go back and reread that as well for people 
um, just to remember what we're doing. Because even as your business is booming, you know, remember you're, you're still trying to make a life, not just a living. Yeah. Hey, and, and Dave, I, I didn't even, you, that was awesome. God does. I didn't even think about it, but I will figure out a way to post. We can, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not in the book business to be John Gresham. I, I, I want to get a message out. So I will figure out a way. I know we can do it to, so you can PDF download that book. I've got it and want to make that available to you guys. So um, I didn't even think about that uh, just in talking, but yeah, it's discovering your life purpose and being able to pursue it's important. So thanks for that plug, David. But um, we, we want to inspire you and, you know, get the right message to you. So um, I will make sure we get that PDF done and make sure you get, what was the PDF that Will wrote? What's the name of that book? Innovating Discipleship. Innovating discipleship. I mean, I feel like my business is 100% the model that I learned from is evangelism and discipleship. And discipleship's about creating and leading your followers. And guys, um, you need to download that book too. We've all got time on our hands. So, I, Dave, I want to thank you for just chatting with me a little bit. Tell Kim thanks for sharing you. Will do. Will do. Lori, Lori's probably glad we had um, that I left the room and created my own space for a few minutes. Yeah. Well, I value my friendship with you deeply, Kurt, and so thankful for your presence in my life and your leadership in my life. So thank you for, for that as well. I, I'm sure we're going to have time. Let's, uh, you and I can regroup, and maybe we'll do this one more time. Maybe, right. maybe what we could do is do it three times since we kind of did this during the adjustment period. Right. Let's you and I talk, and maybe let's come back one time, maybe during the investment season. Yeah. And especially we can touch base with some of those that have downloaded the resource, and maybe they're in the middle of it. Right. And then as we, I think we'll have a pretty good idea with the media kind of what we should know when we're entering the engagement period. I think we're going to feel that and sense that. Right. And maybe we can um, do it one more time and try and cast them out into that season. Sure. Always happy. Always right. happy. See you, buddy. Thanks, Kurt. Bye.